Hi everyone. At the end of the last conversation we had, we learned that this original problem we were solving, it has infinite solutions. I want to talk about that a little bit further and talk about step four in terms of how to write your solution. Looking at the front side, if something has infinite solutions, that does not mean everything is a solution. For example, this point out here would not be a solution because it's not on that line. So not everything is a solution, but there are an infinite amount of solutions because there are an infinite amount of points on this line that will work. So with that said, there are some things that work and some things that don't. And in order to show this idea, we're going to learn a way to write our answer a little bit better than infinite solutions. Because writing it this way does not tell me what the solutions are. It just says there's an infinite amount of them. And so to write our solution for an infinite solution problem, really if it's infinite solution, that means our solution, if we're talking about a graph, would be x comma y comma z. Okay, where x, y, and z can be an infinite amount of things. However, if I write it as x, y, and z, that means I could really plug in any combination of x, y, and z and it would work. When in reality, it doesn't work. So instead of writing my solution as x, y, and z, I'm going to find a way to write all three variables in terms of one another. Let me show you what I mean and then I'll backtrack. So your last two equations you have in terms of two variables. If I just look at one equation, I know this equation is in terms of x and y. I can get one variable in terms of the other. If I solve for x, I'll have x equals an equation with y. If I solve for y, I'll have y equals some equation for y. So I'm just going to do that and then we can backtrack to why that works or what we're doing with this. Um, you can pick whichever one you want. I can solve for x or I can solve for y. I'm just going to choose to solve for x. So if I do that, I have 11x minus 12y equals negative 6. I'm going to try and isolate the x. I'm going to pause the video. You do this on your own because you all know how to solve for x, and I'll come back with the answer. Okay, so you did that on your own. You should have got x equals 12y minus 6 over negative 11. Okay, now my x values can only be the x values that satisfy this equation. So Instead of writing x as my solution, I'm going to say all of my x values can be described as 12y minus 6 over negative 11. Okay, so what I'm really doing is I'm starting to write all three of these variables in terms of one another. This will be helpful because if I know y is, well, y can be an infinite amount of things. So let's say y is 1. I can plug in 1 here and solve for what x would be if y is 1. Or if y is like 500, I can plug in 500, and that'll be what x is when y is 500. Or if y is like negative 3 fifths, I can plug in negative 3 fifths and figure out what x is going to be when y is that value. Now, the only problem here is I have y's and I have a z. So if I plug in y here, I still don't know what z is. So the next step would be to get z in terms of y. Unfortunately, I do not have an equation that's just in terms of z and y. Like this one is easy to solve because it's a two-variable equation. Um, so I'm going to have to go back to my three-variable equations to figure out what z will be in terms of y. And you can pick whatever equation you want. Maybe I'd pick this one because the numbers are the smallest. Um, but it really doesn't matter. So choose your favorite. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I want to figure out what z is in terms of y. In order to get z and y equation, I need to substitute something in for x. And we said below that x was 12y minus 6 over negative 11. So I'm going to substitute that in for x. So let's see, I'll have 3 times 12y minus 6 over negative 11. And now I have an equation that's only in terms of y's and z's. So what I want to do is I want to get z in terms of y. So then my solution is a bunch of equations in terms of y. So I'm going to have to solve for y. And I know this is ugly and there's some fractions, but it's nothing we can't handle. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 3. So you're going to get 36y minus 18 over negative 11 plus 5y minus 2z equals 13. This is the last step I'm going to share with you, and then the rest you're going to do on your own. My advice is if you have a fraction, well, you have two options. You can create a common denominator and try to add fractions, or you can clear the fraction. I recommend clearing the fraction just because then you don't have to deal with fractions. So if you multiply everything by negative 11, you can clear the denominator here. So if I multiply negative 11, that's like negative 11 over 1. So what would happen is that these negative 11s would cancel. And you'd just be left with, that should be a 36y minus 18. 36y minus 18. 
Okay, now I'm going to distribute negative 11 to the rest. So this will be minus 55y and minus 22z, and that equals negative 143. Okay, the reason that this was nice is because now I don't have any fractions to deal with, and I can just solve the equation how I normally would. So your goal is to solve for z in terms of y. Pause, try it on your own, and I'll come back with the answer. Okay, if you solved all those steps correctly, you should get something that looks like this here. And now I have z in terms of y, so I'm going to write my z coordinate as an equation. So instead of saying my point is x comma y comma z, I'm starting to write them all as an equation where I could solve for the possible solutions. This equation for z is 19y minus 125, all divided by, that was negative 22. Okay, and this is how I want you to write your solutions for an infinite, infinite solution problem. Again, this is better than saying infinite solution is my final solution. Because infinite solution just tells me that there's a ton of stuff x, y, and z can be. But this answer tells me exactly what x, y, and z could be. So now I can pick a value for y and solve for a point that would be a solution. So let's say I picked y is, I don't know, you can pick whatever you want. Maybe I'll pick 0 because that sounds easy. So let's say y is 0. And I wanted to know what my x and z would be. I can plug 0 in here and find a possible point. So it would be 0 minus 6 is negative 6 over negative 11, which is 6 elevenths. I plug in 0 here, I get minus 125 over minus 22. So it would be 125 over 22. And now I found one of the many, many, many solutions that could solve this system. Okay, so if I ask you for a possible solution, pick a value of y, plug it in the equations, and you can find one of those infinite solutions. So that's how I want you to write your solutions, and feel free to ask questions. Have a great night.